Now I invite you to take a moment and take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Feel your toes tingle just a little bit as your body relaxes from the week. And we prepare to come together before God and one another in confession this morning. I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Nehemiah, starting with the 8th chapter. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. According to the priest, Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear 
with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of men and women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of law. The scribe Ezra stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the purpose, and beside him stood Madhiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hikiah, and Masiad on his right hand, and Padia, Michael, Malachi, Hashem, Habadadon, Zechariah, and Meshulam on his left. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened, when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord and the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Yeshua, Benai, Sherebiah, Jamin, Ekoba, Shevethel, Hadiah, Messiah, Kelatiah, Azariah, Jazabad, Hana, Peliah, the Levites, helped the people to understand the law, while the people remained in their places. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statues of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired as they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey from in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and is in keeping him there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, 
Keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading is from the book of Corinthians, the first chapter. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is in Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the bo whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas more respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member that there may be no distinction in, within the body, but the members may be, have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues, all our apostles, all our prophets, all our teachers. Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts? Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. 
He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pray with me for a moment, please. The words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Long ago, the people of Judah were taken into exile in Babylon. For many, many, many years, the people were away from home. They attempted to hold on to their traditions and culture. They tried to figure out who they were in that new place, and yet they longed to go home. And as the exile came to an end, a man named Nehemiah was part of the court of the Persian king Artaxerxes. And he heard of the desolate state of Jerusalem, the bleak living conditions there, the dismal state of the wall crumbled around the city. And Nehemiah lobbied the king to appoint him governor and send him back to rebuild the city. Beyond simply rebuilding the city to what was before, Nehemiah wanted to create a community and foster a culture that lived and worked together, one which overcame the divisions and disagreements of the past from before and lived into the future as God's holy people in that place. So with the support of the king, Nehemiah set about his vision of rebuilding the city through much opposition, both from those living in Judah during the exile before, they ret before people returned because they didn't return to an empty space with no, no one there. So with opposition, both from those living there already and enemies from Judah from outside, Nehemiah rallied support, and in just 52 days, the walls of Jerusalem were standing again. And once the walls were standing again, Nehemiah went about bringing people home from exile, bringing them home from the wilderness, and casting hope for the future. And as he called all the people of the city together to celebrate, those already returned, those already there, and those coming from exile gathered together. And they assembled in Jerusalem, people reeling from the trauma of the separation, people struggling with conflicts from the transition home, and people rejoicing over something new being created came together, and they assembled in a large square in the city by the water gate. And in front of them was a large platform built just for this day. And a scribe and priest of Judah named Ezra climbed to the platform and opened the scroll. And he began to read the law of Moses. Ezra stood before all assembled, men and women, young and old, friend and stranger, and told them the story of the Torah, the story of the law of God, the story of who they are and whose they are. And by tradition, this is the first public reading of the compiled text of the Torah. For most scholars believe that the oral tradition of the law and the prophets of the time in the exodus from Egypt and all that came before and after is first written down in the time of the exile in Babylon. So this law was passed around orally and in snippets of text for centuries and centuries, and now for the first time, the story of the escape from Egypt and of God's providence in the desert and God's gift of community and relationship in the law is read from the scroll in its entirety. The word of God was read and interpreted, 
And people recalled who they were. Recalled that God was with them then, with them that day. And with them into the future as they heal from the past and imagine what might yet be. Entering our third year of global pandemic, gathering for worship with 10% of the capacity of the sanctuary filled today, or perhaps having not set foot in this building for two years for many people joining us online, in a building with many unused and underused rooms, may feel a bit like the exile and before the return. Some of you may be longing for a restoration of what was before. Not just what was before COVID either, but a restoration of the days of multiple choirs and extra chairs added to the already abundant seating for Christmas and Easter. Others of you are longing for the future to be here already, to skip through all the discussions and the discernment and all the sticky bits, and let's just be there now. And everybody's just tired. Because it's been a long couple of years for everybody. And we're all tired. Much like the assembly that stood below Ezra in Jerusalem as he began to speak. Because Ezra rose to speak in a Jerusalem that was restored, but not restored exactly as before. He spoke in a Jerusalem transformed into a new place and a new people by what they had been through. And Ezra was not alone when he stood on that platform. There were 13 people with him on the platform while he was reading. Thank you, Beverly, for reading those names this morning for us. Because these are people that are important. And the compilers of the lectionary decided to leave them out, but they are critical to what happened. Because Ezra was not alone reading from that platform. He had people who had worked beside him for 52 days to rebuild the city up there with him. People who had rallied together and labored together and risen to the occasion and acted together to create something new. They had each done different tasks. They were each from different tribes and families. They were different and yet together. And they worked with Ezra and with all the people to transform Jerusalem and Judah for the future of God's people. And these 13 people with Ezra were not alone in working together for following the reading of the traditions of old and the newly compiled law. 13 others went out and interpreted what had been read so that all would understand the tradition of old for the concern of the day. For living as God's people is something that we do together as members of one body. We retell the stories and we keep alive the traditions of old and those that came before us of beloved memory. We receive the grand traditions of the church and the local customs and histories of our place and we interpret them, revive them, and reimagine them for the world that is now, not the world that was. As we linger in this time of transition and separation, you have the gift of the time and space for reimagining your particular community of God's people. In a few weeks, there is an opportunity to meet with members of other ELC congregations in Albany to dream and discuss ways to collaborate more closely as witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ made manifest in this place for the future. And inside the congregation, there are other tracks of exploration, experimentation for the good news of God's great gift to us all. For, like Ezra and Nehemiah's community all those years ago, you are working together with each other and with God to reimagine what it is to be God's people in this place. And that is wonderful. For God is with you through this all, casting a vision of a future that we might not yet see, but God is calling us towards through it all, honoring the past Imagining what is to come 
and living in what is today for the sake of all of God's people. Praise be to God. Amen. Gathered as God's people, let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Spirit of the Lord is poured upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species of that risk of extinction. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, or those living under oppression, 
especially those who are named on our prayer list and those whom we name here aloud or silently in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Breast the variety of ministries in this congregation. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters, un enters into worship and ministry among us. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. at home. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light for the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising and his coming, his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us in this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are indeed the gifts of God for you, the very much beloved people of God. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. I invite you to go ahead and take your cups and pull them apart with your wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. As you remove the lid from your wine, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, may the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Amen.